Oh boy. Yes, that, that has been a great call. Tim, so where, what do where you are think, we start? Man? <laughs> so, where do we start? <laughs> so many things. The things well, first off, it's awesome. Elon thinks, and we know he's sandbagging that the value of Tesla can go up. He sees a roadmap for it to go up 5x. So yeah, 5x yeah. at least. Yes. Um so, so that's what I, that's a five trillion valuation. Yes. That's doable. That's doable. That's yeah, absolutely. Yep. And then, you know, looking at, you know, FSD being coming um, better than uh, humans by the end of the year, give or take two weeks. Um, that's obviously huge. But, you know, with with Dojo coming online, I, I'm not going to bank on it. Either way, we know it's coming. This is what I take away from that is this is really the first time we've seen Elon like, all right, we've now seen all the hurdles that we faced. We thought we were going to get there. Then we realized that we kept hitting ceilings and couldn't get past it. Now it seems like Elon does not see a ceiling anymore. It's a straight line. We're getting there. He mentioned just the amount of miles and the data that they have coming in. He said they're going to be getting to tens of billions of miles. We've been showing that, you know, the graph, the graph alone doubling in this last quarter, that's going to exponentially grow over the next year. So that's why he can see that many miles will be coming in to be able to get us into the billions by the end of the year. That's the data they need to be able to get us solved. So, Ten, yeah, tens and billions. I mean, at this point, the way how it just doubled within three months. Ah, oh, man, that's what I'm saying. This is such a big deal. I'm gonna, I, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> I guess yeah. there's a lot to um, Let me see. What else did we have coming out? So many things. Let me dive in um, all my tweets. I was tweeting a whole bunch of stuff. I saw you were tweeting as well. Yeah. Um, so looking at what was next on here. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Uh, the question that we had was, are there any companies out there that are licensing FSD? There is a major OEM. And as Peggy said, he's getting word that Toyota is the one. So don't know if they are, but there is a major OEM. And a thought that I had about it when I was just uh, responding to somebody was, think about how legacy automotive makers operate. They have gotten so far away from vertically integrated, from vertical integration, that they outsource everything. They use third parties for everything. Tesla is now going to become that third party because they don't know how to do anything in house. They just find somebody else who does it and they pay them to do it. It's just that's how they're going to operate. And again, just like the supercharger network, while they're not licensing it out, they're all adopting the NACS. It's going to happen with FSD. And we already got word that that's happening. So. So did they say a major or or or? Oh, he said major. That, he said so a major just one. OEM. Yeah, he major. said they. So yeah. it's one. So could, yeah, major. Could be Toyota. <laughs> could be. Um, it could be Toyota. I mean, obviously Ford has been working on their own. Maybe they decided partway into it that hey, it's they can't do it, so they're going to just go and partner with Tesla. Seems like Elon and Jim Farley have a pretty good relationship, so that might be the case. Um, either yeah. way, a major OEM, there's a lot of them out there. Um, and again, who, how many other ones out there are working on autonomy? Like we know Ford was GM's got super cruise, but like, does Hyundai have one? Does VW have one? Like who else is actually working on autonomy? And if they are, obviously sure. they're not close, but who else is working on it? Yeah, that was a work, big part. That was a yeah. I mean, and he, he, here's the thing: if 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 one major automaker gets FSD licensed, that would that, that's a ripple effect. That that's a domino effect. The other right. will come, and the other will come, and the other will come. Oh man, this is this is huge. This is absolutely huge. <laughs> oh, exactly. And and the big piece about it is, like you said, one after another. And the closer Tesla gets, even if they are working on their own FSD. If they realize that they're so far away, they're going to just scrap the project and be like, why waste our time and effort and money on this? Tesla's there. We know we're at least five years away. There's no point. So we might as well just give up and we'll take it from Tesla. Facts. Uh, next, facts. Next big one, which was awesome to hear that I was sort of wrong on, was um, the transferability of FSD to a vehicle. So... Mm. I actually love that they're doing this. A couple of reasons. One, for long-term customers who have had Teslas for who knows how long, maybe they have hardware too still in their vehicle, which, you know, 
isn't going to work very well with, you know, FSD when it comes out. Version 12 may not even be functional with it at all. These customers can take their vehicles, upgrade to a new one, get the new hardware four or three, depending on which one they go with, and they'll be able to transfer that FSD. This could help boost a lot of deliveries here in Q3 when they're expecting them to be down when it comes to production. They're not going to be producing as many, so they might be able to get more deliveries coming out just because of the fact that they've got a lot of people who currently have Teslas that they want to get better hardware and they'll upgrade. That, I think, is brilliant. Yep. Sheesh moment. Sheesh. Uh, <laughs> honey, VW is desperate enough to get FSD if Herbert asks Elon. Yeah, unfortunately, Herbert doesn't have much of a say over there anymore. It stinks. Oh, um, boy. Here you go. A one-time impact from FX added eight cents to EPS. Damn. Uh, let me see. What else do we have? Yeah. There were there was, was so much. Was Twenty million. Yeah. And, and and again, the big thing from all of this is Elon's focus towards AI, towards software, towards autonomy. You know, talking about how he thinks Arc and Arc is great, and the way they lay out you know, how autonomy is going to play out in the future, that that's the big one. Um, and again, that's the, that's the key. And as we all know, FSD is the next big one. Cybertruck obviously is going to move the stock. Model 2 obviously going to move the stock. But getting us to the robotaxi, and he was also referring to the next generation platform as the robotaxi. So whatever is coming out of Mexico is the robotaxi, whether it's going to be for us to use, for them to use as the fleet, whatever it is, that platform that is the game changer coming out of Mexico. Yep. It's going to be better than the That's drugs it. coming out of there. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that's insane. That's insane. And how he dipped into the robo taxis and all that kind of stuff. And how, and how he said that arcs numbers are quite realistic. And I'm yes. sitting there. I'm like, and doesn't arc want to, doesn't arc see a seven X in the next, Four years, two thousand by twenty twenty seven is is what she's putting the stock price would be, and that's yeah. the bit, and that's the base case. Yes. So, <laughs> so now again, oh the stock God. price, the stock price might not always reflect what their revenue projections are for Robo Taxi, but but mm. if their revenue projections are correct for Robo Taxi, then we're looking yeah. at a significantly higher stock price. As long as, as long as there's some sort of a revenue generation and some massive growth behind it, AKA what happened to NVIDIA in Tesla with their robot taxi, then that's it. Then institutional investors go like, oh, wait a minute. Oh crap. Oh man, we got to buy this thing now. <laughs> It'll be that moment, but that's probably going to take another maybe year or two, or I don't know, maybe three, depending when this robot tax will be solved. So, oh, yeah. or the FSD. So, Sheesh. <laughs> and, and so like, like looking at NVIDIA themselves. So NVIDIA's PE is a 244. That's stupid Jeez. high. That's and crazy. Tesla's at an 85 right now because Tesla is still being like, they're not sure. Like, are we software? But yeah. if Tesla is going to be doing stuff with Dojo and they're going to be taking NVIDIA, but they have, but NVIDIA can't provide everything that they need. So they have to create Dojo. Then Tesla's going to be just like NVIDIA, but they also have, EVs and energy and all this other stuff coming out as well. So it stands to reason that you can certainly have a PE of 244 on Tesla. I'm not even going to take <laughs> their my valuation model to put a 244 PE on it, but I guarantee you that stock price is significantly higher than we are right now. God, 250 PE for Tesla stock. Seriously. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be Maybe a day to see. Have a good one. Thanks for hanging with us, buddy. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for coming, man. This is what th going over three hours. Yes. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> I mean, we won't hang on here too long because we're just going to go over the highlights of this. But uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, overall, and and a lot of people asking, you know, why if the if everything was good, like Rob here, you know, if it was all good, why is the stock tanking? By the rumor, sell the news um, happens a lot, and there's also a lot of like, don't forget, we had the Cybertruck hype that came out. Um, that yeah. got us a bit excited going into this earnings. And er the earnings numbers themselves um, were good. They, they were a beat, but not like a smash beat. So they were a beat. EPS, 
you can say was a smash beat because it beat it by like 12%. But um, but everything else was just, all right, cool. We we hit it. And don't forget, the whisper number was 89 cents. So a 91 cent EPS was a beat, but not a smash off of the whisper number. So that's yeah. kind of the reason why. And, you know, them then coming out saying that they're expecting production to be lower because of the summer shutdowns for things. You know, Elon did, as Karav pointed out, Elon pointed out, uh, said upgrades coming. So perhaps that's Project Highland that's coming out. They didn't mention that at all. Um, you know, little things like that. Um, so their, their guidance for Q3 at least, not the greatest. And the strongest guidance Elon gave for the second half of the year was them solving FSD, which most people on Wall Street don't care. So Night Moose, yeah, and go on. Um, so, and, red. and, and that, that's it. It's just, <sighs> and if I want to, if I need to add, yeah, yeah, I could add to that, uh, institutional investors, they only look six to 12 months ahead. So when they, when, when they heard Elon just talk about AI and nothing to do with the vehicles, in fact, he even said that if interest rates continue to go up, which look more, most likely it is for some stupid reason, then, you know, people will, will buy less cars and they probably have to reduce margin. They reduce cost. So obviously, Someone who's looking only six or 12 months ahead, they're going to say, oh, oh boy, uh, this doesn't sound too good. I'm going to sell it off. But, you know, we Tesla investors who you and I and who's viewing this uh, live stream, we're long-term investors. We look five, 10 years ahead, which is much different than what these institutions look like. So the lower it goes, I mean, I welcome it, man. Please go to 200. I would love to like sell everything and go all, <laughs> even more all <laughs> Oh yeah. And, and that's, that's it too, is, you know, like, and they reiterate it. And the thing is wall street doesn't like direct truthful facts and the direct truthful facts are Tesla is still for the next handful of quarters. As Zach said, they're basically playing it conservative. They don't know what's going to happen. So they're going to play it conservative. They want to make sure that they can get through this, but they also said that they have free cash flow coming in despite everything they have going on, all the things that they're spending money on when it comes to R and D, when it comes to CapEx, all of these things are still moving them forward despite all of the headwinds. And it's because they are playing it conservative. They're setting themselves up for when we come out of this to be even stronger. But when they tell wall street that wall street's like, well, that means that for the next six months, you guys are going to suck. So we're going to sell the stock. Yeah. And see, and the best example to look at, is Nvidia stock? They clearly said that the next quarter, in the earnings call, that it's gonna be this massive jump, and it's because of that why it went up. Yep, that's it. Yep. O only a quarter away, not five years away. Only a quarter away. That's all they need to do. Oh wow, you're gonna thirty percent next quarter. Buy the stock, make it three hundred PE. Yeah. So that's all they, they, they want. Speak, but yep, they, it's it's all about the guidance, and Elon speaks long term because that's how he thinks. And he's not going to cater to Wall Street because he doesn't give a crap. That's not who he is doing this business for. And that's why for us as long-term investors, again, this is the same stuff he's been saying for the last decade. And people who have been investing for the last decade, obviously, in the long term, you've done very well. Yep. And uh, Tim, in about, uh, when did you start investing in Tesla stock? 2020? 2019? Uh, end of 2020. So by 2030, we're, we're going to do well as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and yeah, you guys watching as well. If you guys have been investing since 2020, you'll, you'll oh, do yeah. well as well. We, we will do very well. And then Karav here, yes, we were talking about that. Energy margins at 18.4%. Yeah. Which yep. last month or last quarter was 11%. So yes, yep. huge, huge numbers coming out of energy. So again, energy margins. Hey, energy margins beat EV margins. So they got that going for them. There we um, go. <laughs> and, and yeah, and as that continues to ramp, the, those margins are going to get better as well. Yep. Um, Hanif, any news on Giga Mexico construction will start? No, they didn't actually say that. Um, unless I missed it, but I believe I didn't what hear it either. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you guys heard it, let me know. But again, it seems like they're on track for um, construction being done and production starting by the end of next year. So I would imagine construction will be starting very soon. All the permits have been um, approved as far. I believe they've been approved. Um, so I think they're set to go. They're just finalizing things to start breaking ground. Yeah. Tesla doesn't delay. They, whenever, they're whenever they going to start as soon as possible. ASAP. Oh, yeah. So they don't, these guys don't mess around. 
Uh, Dominic, this is great. What's uh, what's your thoughts on value of building prosthetics for amputees disabled? That was actually awesome. And it's funny because I didn't even think about it, but when they were talking about Neuralink being able to you know, control uh, missing limbs on people robotically, I never put two and two together of, hey, well, the Optimus ones they can now use. They can make an arm, an Optimus arm, and like think about like somebody who's a quadriplegic can now be you know fifty percent Optimus. That's friggin' awesome. You know, being able to give <laughs> people functionality of life back is outstanding. Um, I absolutely love love that idea. Um, and again, uh, it's not going to be a a huge profit maker. Who cares? That's not what it's there for. To be able to give people back a quality of life that they haven't had in for like, for a long time. That's huge. Facts. Yes. And Rob, I love it too. Yes. Us Tesla investors. Peggy. Us you Tesla are, investors. We, we are one. We are one together. It's awesome. Indeed we are. Indeed we are. <laughs> oh, man. Is there anything else we want to go over before we get off of here? Oh, man. Oh, boy. I got um, to check out the transcript one more time before I make a video for tomorrow. Uh, I think you, you can find it on the website, right? On, on the web. Tesla. Uh, yeah. Have to check it yeah. Out. Yeah. I need to check the chance transcript before because this is a lot of juicy things. A lot of juicy things that were said in this. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh here man. we go. And, and Gary Black is awesome. So Gary Black tweeted out key takeaways. So I'll run through these. Um, okay, cool, cool. Even uh, Q th Q3 production will be down modestly from Q2 production due to plant upgrades. Wall Street was looking for a 2 to 3K increase. So that could be part of the reason of the sell-off. Wall Street wanted to see an increase. We're actually going, they forecasted for a decrease. That's a key piece of this, mm. case, this uh, sell off. Yep. Uh, Tesla, again, we talked about it. Tesla in talks with at least one OEM to license FSD. Uh, three, management wouldn't commit to no further price reductions, suggesting it depended on whether interest rates kept rising. They might have to reduce prices to keep payments the same. Elon also insisted that improved autonomy makes any margin degradation now irrelevant since value of FSD car will increase. Again, that's awesome. And Wall Street doesn't give a shit about that. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Wall Street isn't caring. Because they're like, they're like FSD isn't solved. Autonomy isn't here yet. Even if it does get solved by the end of the year, it's not going to be a revenue generator in the next 12 months. Who cares? So who cares? So that's the whole thing. And then the uncertainty about prices. Again, they've said this in the first quarter as well. They don't know what the market's going to bring. If the Fed goes up on interest rates, they might have to come down on prices. They fluctuate their prices strictly based upon you know the demand of what's coming in. And the higher the interest rates go, the slower the demand's going to go because the less people can afford. You know, we talk about the dominoes that are falling when it comes to why I think the macro environment's going to crash. Credit card debt is skyrocketing. It's at scary levels, as Elon said. That's another thing. Eventually, people are going to hit their credit limits, won't be able to spend at all, and then there won't be any extra spending coming out. We're going to hit a wall eventually, and that's yeah. coming. And because of the fact that Tesla basically said that, that caused a sell-off. And not to mention that every rate increase they do, that brings us you know, a step closer to that. So Yes. Uh, fourth was Cybertruck deliveries will start later this year with mass production in 2024. This we knew. Um, so, you know, deliveries will be later this year. Now they said later this year, didn't say quarter as Peggy pointed out. Yeah. So again, he did say that the vehicles in the earnings report, the vehicle that they produced this past week, isn't like the true production vehicle that's going out for delivery. These are the like production, let's test them type, type of vehicles off of the production line. That's what those are. Um, so we will get there still again, no word on when we're going to be seeing the delivery day event. Sure. Uh, Tesla saw the largest quarter over quarter deflation in auto cogs per unit in a while and awesome Karab for pointing yeah. this out, um, you know, dropping almost $300 <laughs> in cogs in one quarter. So Absolutely insane. again, massive. And somebody, one of the analysts did ask, you know, about when we're going to be dropping under that $36,000 mark that we've basically been at for a long time. And again, that, that was an uncertain answer because like it, they're looking at the future uncertainty is just that uncertain and they don't know where we're going to be going for prices, where everything is going to be going. So it's hard for them to forecast all of that. Um, I, I think, I think we're going to be hearing a lot different information on the earnings calls in a year from now, because I think at that point we'll have 
a lot more settled information. But until then, I think we're going to hear a lot of that same information every single quarter. And as Gary points out, obviously points two, four, and five are positive, one and three are negative, and that explains why we're down four percent after hours. Hmm. So, I mean, it should. I mean, should be closer to fifteen percent because I want to buy more shares. But oh well, it's okay. For me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, look, anyone who's watching this and, and still has doubt, Tesla's operating margin reduced, but they still generated more profits than last quarter. If that doesn't tell you that this company is beyond resilient and beyond fundamentally strong, then I don't know which other company out there. And that includes Apple that can be this resilient and strong. I mean, and I don't, that, that's just insane. Wow. Phenomenal. Phenomenal earnings call, phenomenal earnings report. I'm very happy with this. I'm happy as well. I'm, I'm happy that we got what the information that we got. It just reinforced my bullish stance on Tesla. And I'm even happier that the stock price is coming down because that means I can buy more for less. Facts. I'm getting my favorite toy on sale. I love it. <laughs> oh boy, I can't wait. All right, folks. <laughs> We're going to jump off of here. Um, thank you for hanging with us. Three and a half hours. This is by far my longest live stream ever. You guys are troopers. Peggy, you're a trooper. Thanks for hanging with us as well. This was a thank pleasure. You guys for thanks helping. for having me on. Yes, thanks, yeah. <laughs> thanks for helping us uh, pop Peggy's cherry for earnings calls. This is his first ever <laughs> earnings call live stream. Um, oh, so this, this was awesome. Um, anything else you want to add, Peggy? Oh, man. Tesla Investors. Live long. That's all I got to say. <laughs> if, if you guys do not follow him, uh, check out his YouTube channel, Curious Peggy. He is also on Twitter, Curious Peggy. He's a curious guy, always questioning everything. Absolutely love it. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, you guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging with us. We will see you guys all later. Enjoy the stock tomorrow. <laughs>